Ani and welcome to the last installment of the Grass Dance Chronicles series. In this video, as you can tell from the title, I'm going to show you how to make the shirt and shorts for the Grass Dance Regalia. So a big disclaimer out of the way, this is just what I did for the regalia that I'm making. You can do this uh, a million different ways. Here I'm making sort of a t-shirt. It'll be short sleeved. I'm also making shorts. Um, you can make long sleeved. In fact, a lot of people make long sleeved shirts and they also make pants instead of shorts. You should be able to use the same um, instructions that I give in this video. Um, just obviously making the sleeves longer and the pant legs longer as well. Now in this video, we're not gonna be actually measuring out and fully drafting the shirt and the shorts. What I did was I asked them for a shirt and a pair of shorts that was the fit that they were looking for. Um, and I used those articles as the pattern pieces, basically. So you'll see exactly how I do that in this video. I'll give you all of the instructions. Um, I just thought that I would let you know right in the beginning of the video that in order to follow my instructions, what I did was get um, a shirt and a pair of shorts that I wanted to copy the fit from. So with all that being said, just a reminder, all of the materials that I use will be listed in the description box below, as well as links to all of the other videos in this series. And let's get into it. <laughs> With my fabric folded, I placed the shirt onto the fabric and folded the sleeves in, taking care to keep the shape of the armhole flat. I also adjusted the length to be shorter by folding up the bottom hem. The idea here is to trace the shape of the shirt, but remembering to trace about a half inch away from the edge to add seam allowance. Typically, the front of the shirt will have a deeper neck hole than the back of the shirt. If this is what you'll be doing, then you'll want to cut the shape of the backside first. This is because we'll be cutting on folded fabric to produce both the front and back panels at the same time. So you want to cut the bigger pattern first and then trim the one you want smaller later. To do this, separate the panels so you're only working with the front and trim the neck hole slightly deeper, probably about two to two and a half inches deeper. I did make the neck hole different in this video, however, because I wanted it to match the neck hole of the yoke, which is pretty deep and exposes the neck, so please be aware of that if you choose to follow what I'm doing. Here you see I laid the yoke pattern under the shirt, lining up the neck and shoulders, but keeping the edge of the pattern piece about a half inch outside the shirt to account for seam allowance. Once I trace around the bottom and sides of the shirt, then I connect the bottom of the armpit of the shirt to the tip of the shoulder on the yoke. And honestly, you see me cutting this armhole. Um, I would advise cutting the neck hole and the shoulders first and then folding that in half and tracing the first armhole that you cut because here you see me having two different size armholes and uh, yeah, you want symmetry. <laughs> Moving on to the sleeves, I folded the sleeve of the shirt flatly in half and then lined up the fold of the sleeve with the fold of the fabric. Then I cut a half inch outside of the hem and the underside of the sleeve before flipping the shirt up to cut along the armhole of the sleeve with a half inch for seam allowance of course. Doing this produces one sleeve, so to make the second cut easier, you can use your newly cut sleeve as a pattern piece to trace. Just remember to line it up on the fold. If you're doing any applique or ribbon work on the shirt, now would be the time to do so. But to assemble the shirt, join the front and back panels right sides together and pin. Then stitch together the side seams and the shoulder seams. Thank you. 
To attach the sleeves, find the top midpoint of the sleeve and line it up with the shoulder seam. Then pin the rest of the sleeve on and stitch. I just sewed an entire sleeve on with a zigzag stitch. I don't care. I am leaving it on there. Okay. Now that the sleeve is in place, we can close up the sleeve by pinning and stitching it shut. Once you close up the sleeve, a small gap should be left in the armhole stitch that attaches the sleeve to the shirt, so just make sure you close that up. Finally, I hem the sleeves and the bottom of the shirt by simply folding up the edge a half inch and top stitching. The performance fabric that I'm using doesn't fray enough to worry me, but if you're using a material that does fray, such as cotton, I would suggest either doing a rolled hem or you could serge, pseudo serge, or use another fray blocking method on the edge of your fabric before rolling up once to hem. And the same goes for hemming the neck hole. Now this next part is very optional, but I thought I'd show you that I actually attached the yoke to the shirt. I lined up the shoulder seams, one on top of the other, and pinned them into place. Then I just did a simple straight stitch along the seam line on each shoulder. I chose to do this to prevent the yoke from spinning around the body while they are dancing and so they wouldn't have to pin it to the shirt or fasten it another way in order to keep it from moving on them. Again, you don't have to do this, but it is helpful. And now on to the shorts. Shorts are made up of two panels, one on the left and one on the right. For each panel, the left side of it is slightly different from the right side of it. That difference allows for extra room for the butt. So laying the shorts down flat, fold them in half along the seam, making sure to flare out the crotch. I didn't like the angle I was filming here, so I'm just letting you know that I turned the project. I just feel like I need to say that right now to prevent confusion. Before moving on, I also measured how wide the elastic band is while stretched so I know how wide to cut the waist of the shorts. First, I'm drawing a line along the straight edge right up against the shorts and stopping at the top of the waistband. This step is also important later on. Then measuring from that line, I'm marking half of the waist measurement. So from a 17 inch waist measurement, I'm marking eight and a half inches from the line. Now we cut from that point along the seam. But of course tracing is a little different when an elastic band is pulling at the fabric. If you press the shorts flat and look at the front seam, you can see that the fabric sort of dips towards the waistband. So cut straight down towards that dip. Then it is at that dip that you want to transition to cutting along the shape of the shorts, adding half inch seam allowance. Just be sure to not cut along that important line we drew. At the waist of the shorts, I added two inches of length to account for a one and a half inch wide waistband. And now we have finished just one side of the panel. As I said before, each side of the panel is different and we drew a very important line. So lift up the shorts and fold them in half again, but the other way. This time the crotch should flare out slightly more than before. This feature is what gives that extra room for the butt. Now we want to lay the shorts on the other side of the important line, taking care that we line up the straight edge with the important line and the waist of the shorts with the end of the important line or two inches below your cut from the other side. And or you can also line up the hem a half inch from the other side's cut. Then you'll do the same thing you did before. Cut the waist, cut from the waist to that dip on the seam, then follow the shape of the shorts with an extra half inch. And now you should have two panels where each side has a slightly different shape from the other. 
If you are doing any applique or ribbon work on your shorts, now would be the time to do so. To assemble the shorts, place the panels right sides together, making sure you're matching up the sides, since they are different. Then stitch from the waist down to the end of the dip. Those stitches you just made were the front and back of the shorts, so refold the shorts the other way. Now you can join the bottom edges from one corner to the other to form the crotch. And now it's time to do the waistband. We need to fold that extra 2 inches of fabric down and pin. Then stitch along the edge of the fabric, about a quarter inch away from the edge. Stitch almost all the way around the waist, but leave an opening. This stitch creates a channel to feed your elastic band through. Next I used the example shorts to measure the width of the elastic band, then folded the band and measured again in order for the band to wrap around the entire waist. Pin one end of the elastic band near the opening of the waist channel, then add a pin to the other end. Feed that end through, using the pin to help guide the elastic all the way through the channel. Once the elastic is all the way through, stitch the ends together. I like to go forward and backwards for this stitch so that the stitch is nice and strong. Try the shorts on if you can to make sure the elastic fits, then close up the gap. Hem each leg of the shorts using the same methods you use for the hems of the shirt, and you don't have to do this next part, but this is a grass dance regalia, so I added some fringe to make it look extra cool. Yeah. 